Good evening, and welcome to the May 24th meeting of the Murfreesboro City School Board. We're certainly glad to have those of you that are with us tonight here. We're glad to have those that are watching at home viewing our meetings tonight as well. During our moment of silence tonight, I think it is only appropriate that we remember the tragedy event that happened today in Texas. Uh, it, it really gets close to home when you know that it's second and third grade students with such a, I don't know, I, I can't think of a reason why anything like that would happen. And then we had a situation less than a week ago at the university with, after one of our high school graduations. During our moment of silence, I would like to rem for you to remember those people in the state of our country and our youth and those that we are trying to teach and those that we are trying to protect as well. It's getting to be where it's, it's, it's scary. It really is scary. But before that, our pledge tonight, led by Macy Peak, a first grade student from Black Fox, Valeria Miranda, a first grade student at Black Fox also, and Grayson Macbeth, a second grade student at Black Fox. <laughs> We're glad to have you young people with us tonight, and let us stand now for our pledge, followed by our moment of silence. under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I'm on the south. Thank you. Dr. Duke? Yes, yeah, sir. Before we move forward with the agenda tonight, I, I want to just go back and, and talk a moment to our parents about what you mentioned earlier and, and what we've experienced as a nation today. And I know it's still early and we are still learning a lot of the details. And I know there are really no words to say except this is truly an incomprehensible tragedy, um, as you mentioned, especially when you think about the age of the students involved. At the end of the day, we talk a lot about reading. We talk a lot about math. We talk a lot about making sure our kids are ready for the future. But we as a school district also understand that the greatest responsibility we have is to ensure the safety of our kids each day. So we want to assure our families that tonight we have already started working with our school counselors. We have already started communicating with them to make sure they are prepared tomorrow to address any student or teacher who may need support in dealing with this and um, as they learn more about it tonight. Um, we'll be sending more information to both our faculty, our staff, and our parents tonight. Um, but we do want our families to understand that we understand the responsibility we have and we've already started to make sure we have things in place for tomorrow thank you sir any other comments from board members on the topic before we pr proceed i see none all right uh dr duke do you want to let's see where are we communication no i'm sorry we need to approve the agenda don't we yes okay You've seen a, the copy of the agenda. You've had a chance to look over it. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda as written? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Barton. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. All right, Ms. Trail, communications. Well, the communications are small today. Um, but we did want to take this opportunity to remind you as well as our community that we are having a gently used children's book drive um, for Bob the Book Bus for the summer route this summer. So if anyone is cleaning out a closet or bookshelf and they just need to give us some of those really good gently used uh, children's books, we will gladly accept those. 
Uh, we've tried to make it convenient for everyone. So Wilson Bank has opened their doors at all of their locations. And if you just wanna drop off a book at, at Wilson Bank location, we'll get it from them. Or Children's Dentistry, which we know has lots of children visiting, also has opened their doors for this book drive. So once again, it is a gently used book drive. We'll also obviously accept them at the central office. Uh, just keep that in mind. Um, we did get information just this afternoon, so I wanna take time to congr congratulate John Paget the one working behind the scenes. Where so is John? Out John, get out of here. I don't know. Come on, John. John, can you let um, you. Michael Lynn do the work? Up back there just a second. Anyway, uh, there he comes. Yay, John. Okay, I'll tell you why. Now, <laughs> now, that, we, now that we've cheered him on, I'll tell you why. Uh, so Take 20 won a Telly Award. And um, take 20 is our 20 minutes about Murfreesboro City Schools and just a real wonderful, hopefully wonderful parent uh, communication tool that we've been using for over a year now. So we did win a bronze and Dr. Duke wanted me to point out that in the same uh, division that we won a bronze, Sesame Street won gold. So oh. not bad, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> it does put it in perspective when you know we're competing with Sesame Street. So I do want to say thank you to John for all the work on that. I also want to take time, if you don't mind, to uh, also give a shout out to Tori Carr. Tori does much of the scheduling behind the scenes. She takes care of making sure we have the props and everything we need. So congratulations to her. And thank you to Sherry Arnett and Cindy Clish and Dr. Duke and Maria Johnson and all those people we call regularly this say hey we need to shoot we need to shoot so we appreciate that so that was all of my announcements today but I am very excited about the tele award thank you very good very good all right spotlight on education Dr. Duke yes sir uh, good evening again uh, Mr. Chairman and Board as we know this Friday we are wrapping up the school year in addition we are also wrapping up the first year of our teacher advisory council we assembled our teacher advisory council last May after our teachers of the year were named in the district one of our goals was to select a group of employees to gain meaningful and authentic feedback on the work we do as a district to help prepare us to make sure their voices are being heard in the profession We've had a really great year, and actually I think we have a few members of our Teacher Advisory Council here. So if you're here from our Teacher Advisory Council, will you briefly stand up? A few of them were able to join us tonight. Um, and really they have given us tremendous input and they've really sacrificed time um, to make sure that we could hear those voices tonight. So I've actually asked Dr. Kathy Presnell, who has helped lead this group and organize this work, to come up and give us just a brief, give the board a brief overview of what we've done this year with our Teacher Advisory Council. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I am thrilled to get to share this um, with you guys tonight. It's work that's been really exciting to do this year. I would be remiss if I didn't start off with a couple of thank yous. First, Dr. Duke for making this a priority in his calendar, which is packed. I don't know of any other director of schools who is investing the amount of time and energy into a teacher advisory council like he is. So thank you. And to Miss Arnett, who has been an incredible thought partner um, and advisor for this. She's led a couple of our most popular sessions. So thanks for all you've done. Um, I'm going to start off with a really high level brief overview of what the year has looked like, but then I'm going to turn it over to one of our members who's going to share a little bit more about just her experience and what the year has meant to her. Um, but this was our inaugural year, and when we started the year, we started with really three key purposes, and we worked really hard to keep these front and center because they're really important to us. The first is around creating a system for teachers' voices to authentically impact the work of the district. Like, there is nobody who is closer to the day-to-day -day work that is at the core of why we are all here than our teachers, right? And who better to inform the work at every level of our district than teachers to help us make sure we're making good and right decisions for our kids every day. We also wanted to improve retention. That's a huge priority for our district, as I'm sure it is you know, everywhere right now. But we thought that creating a kind of system where teachers can see firsthand 
that their voices are heard and valued will make this a program that makes people say, I'm a great Murfreesboro City School teacher and I want to stay here because, of, because I know I'm listened to and I'm heard. And then our third one was around equipping teachers to be informed advocates for issues that are important to them. We're pretty proud of this because we think it really kind of sets us apart. So we wanted our teachers to have the skill sets that whether they're sitting at the teacher advisory council table or they're inviting a legislator into their classroom or they are even sitting at a policy table with people at the state or national levels, that they have the skill set they need to be able to advocate really effectively for issues that are important to them and to their kids. But really, at the heart of it, this is all about teacher voice. We want Murfreesboro City School teachers to say, I am here, I know I'm heard, I know people care about what I have to say. So when we think about this, Across the course of the year, really quickly, our members were made up of our Murfreesboro City School Teachers of the Year. They were all invited to be a part. They seem to be a super logical choice because they have the instructional expertise, but they also have the respect of their peers because the, the, the way that they're recognized in their schools. And then every meeting followed a very similar agenda, and this was important to us because we did not want this to be a meeting where we come, they sit and get, or we ask a few questions and then we go, right? We wanted this to be a continuous cycle that cycled throughout the course of the entire year. So every meeting had that same, had the same agenda, kind of template to it. So really quickly, we always started off, or actually we learned to start off with our question and answer with Dr. Duke because that was rated really, really high. So we moved it up earlier on the agenda, but every month, uh, we met once a month for about an hour and a half in advance. We reached out to teachers and we were like, please go to your colleagues, get the questions, no question is too big or too small. Dr. Duke would answer every one of them in person and we got questions from how is rezoning gonna affect my school to what are three words that would describe what you think Murfreesboro City Schools ought to be in the next few years, right? So it's really, really good conversation. Our advisory piece, what we wanted to do is scope this out across the year so that our teachers had the opportunity to speak to issues of policy that were timely, that we knew were gonna be important at certain points of our school calendar and that they could really see that they have impacted it. So you can see we did everything from they were able to weigh in on professional development, our calendar, which I know Ms. Vance um, was able to be a part of presenting that to you guys, our budget, our five-year plan, and you can see teachers' voices in there because what they said, we like for um, our instruction department to pull grade level cohorts on our in-service days, so we've continued that. Um, they said we believe in our five-year plan. We need to have um, a metric in there about academic growth. We included that. Um, the Murfreesboro City School calendar, we have a whole week off at Thanksgiving, thanks to our Teacher <laughs> Advisory Council, so a huge hand for that. So they have really been an integral part of making sure that policies that we work at at the district level are good and right, both for our teachers and our kids. And then our advocacy piece, and when we thought about also scoping this out across the course of a year, we thought about it in two buckets. One, we wanted to gradually build their ability to speak really well to issues that were important to them. So we started off with building a platform, they learned to craft an elevator speech, we culminated with them inviting stakeholders into their classroom, and even going through a storytelling workshop where they learned how to take a story from their class and use it to craft a message they could, they could um, carry out to a stakeholder. And then we also expanded their understanding of policy. Everything from local, from our city council on our school board, to the Tennessee legislature and how that works through education committees at the state level. And they even advised us on what our what our teacher advisory council to look like next year too. So it was really, really good. We ended every meeting with a survey and this was one of my favorite pieces of feedback we got. It says authenticity, openness to share information, collaboration with other educators and teacher voices are valued. That was capitalized. I did not, that was not a, a Kathy edit. Uh, that was capitalized. But it was one of those moments when I was like, okay, we are achieving the things that we set out to achieve. I am gonna invite Rachel Pepper to come up and share her experience with you. She is a 2021-22 Teacher of the Year from Irma Siegel Elementary, and she has been such a powerful voice, and she has actually stepped out and I think done some things that she says she, what she didn't think she would do, but she did it and she liked it. So Rachel, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Dr. Preston and Dr. Duke and school board members for allowing me to come and share about my experience on the Teacher Advisory Council. While reflecting on my time on the council, actually three words that we use at Siegel came to mind. Empower, serve, and engage. 
First off, empower, because as a teacher, it's empowering to have your opinions and voices heard and to know on a district level, we are valued. And to know that your opinion is valued is very empowering. Serve. We came together as a group of teachers from across the district who simply want the best for our state, our community, our schools, and our students. Teachers who were able to be thinking partners to help set our colleagues up for success in Murfreesboro City Schools. We were asked to weigh in on professional development ideas, school calendar proposals, and budget decisions. And lastly, engage. We learned how much our voices matter. We learned practices on engaging in conversations at the state level regarding education. We also focused on advocating for our individual passions. I was actually able to coordinate a visit to our school from, with State Senator Don White. My students were beyond excited for the opportunity to meet with her and talk with her. My students saw firsthand in that moment our government at work. When um, she left, they were all kind of talking about the visit and they were just so surprised how easy it was to talk to her. And they just, they felt heard as well. They felt empowered. And I just saw in their eyes, they knew that they could be future you know, leaders in our community and that they could make a difference. And in that moment, I saw it and they saw it. It is our job as teachers, leaders, and parents to advocate for our students. And thanks to my time spent on the Teacher Advisory Council, I feel empowered, but most importantly, supported. As a teacher and parent, thinking of the educators who will have the opportunity to serve on this council, in the coming years makes me beyond excited for Murfreesboro City Schools. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Duke, the best of MCS. Thank you, Rachel, for that. I, um, I want to just, before we jump to the best of NCS, say again, thank you to Dr. Pressel. This is really important work that she's helping to lead, and uh, I'm really proud of it, and I really appreciate the time and effort you guys have put into it. It's been a really remarkable year, um, and I said it's always great when they ask if, several asked if they could keep coming to the meetings, and I said, well, that's a good thing, right? So we'll see. Uh, I am so pleased tonight to present our Best of MCS Award um, to an individual who works tirelessly to make sure the students who attend Murfreesboro City Schools have everything they need to be ready to learn. And this person really helps us live out that vision of making sure our kids are fully known, safe, challenged, and empowered. So I'm gonna ask Ms. Latoya Beard to join me at the podium. Yeah. Ms. Beard is one of our school social workers who serves at Case and Lane, Irma Siegel, and Mitchell Nelson. She has been a social worker with us since 2012. Prior to that, she worked in our ESP program as a worker, assistant director, and site director. Overall, she's been with the city schools for 16 years. Ms. Beard was described by one of our principals as a superhero. From <laughs> delivering food, finding housing and transportation for our students, to communicating with parents about sensitive topic, topics, her role as a social worker is all-encompassing. Despite serving multiple schools with high need populations, Latoya's caseload never deters her from eagerly agreeing to call any parent, visit any home, or participate in any meeting she is asked to join. Even in situations that feel challenging and when it seems like there are barriers at every turn, Latoya is always able to find a way to help us better support our students and their families. Because of her, there are more children who have a safe place to go at night. They have more food to eat, and when they leave school, an adult, and they are with adults who are at home who are more empowered with the knowledge about how to help them get what they need. LaToya works under, under the direction of Mr. Marlin, and he told me that LaToya is one of the hardest working school social workers he has ever known. All of her schools love her and beg him not to reassign her <laughs> to other schools. <laughs> She works tirelessly to assist her families and to empower them to access the resources in our community. She is well known in our community, trusted by schools, families, and students. Ms. Beard was nominated for this by Dr. Bullard, the principal of Case and Lane. 
And she said, LaToya is a stellar advocate and resource within our building community and district. She works behind the scenes and does not seek rec recognition or accolades, but anyone who has had the pleasure to meet her knows the difference that she makes in the lives of our families. She is undetoured by challenging situations and always seeks to find solutions that will keep our students and our families safe, healthy, and cared for. She is incredibly dedicated and be, can be counted upon to do whatever it takes, and she truly represents the best of MCS. And I am so proud to uh, recognize her tonight and tell her thank you for the work that she does. speechless um, <laughs> after all that. So Dr. Bullis, you are amazing and, and thank you so much. Um, when people recognize you for good work, you kind of got to keep up the good work, right? <laughs> so I am motivated now to keep up the good work. I get to work every single day with the best of MCS, including the staff, the kids, and the parents. And I am extremely lucky and fortunate every single day to be a school social worker with MCS. Thank you guys so, so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Dr. Duke, I think you're ready to tell us about a new partnership we're going to have with MTSU. Yes, sir. If I can get my computer back <clears throat> on, we'll see. <laughs> <clears throat> One of, yes, I am excited to announce a new research partnership with MTSU. You know, one of the unique benefits that we have as a district is to have MTSU in our backyard and our community. And we have enjoyed a really strong partnership with them for many years, which has greatly benefited both the students and the teachers of Murfreesboro City. Our ongoing partnership has allowed us to address many different needs and areas within our district. First, of course, we have our placement of residency students for their student teaching experiences. Um, our teachers are working in the classrooms each day to help prepare the next generation of teachers and giving future e educators a glimpse into why MCS is a great place to work. During our last board meeting, you heard Ms. Klish present on Project Optimal, which is a partnership with the MTSU faculty to help ensure our current teachers receive ongoing professional development and training they need to meet the needs of our students and teach as students. Next year, as you're aware, we're extending our partnership into our ESP program with a budget that will provide tuition reimbursement to those in the College of Education who are working with us to provide before and after school for our families. So as we think about all these different avenues that we've partnered with MTSU, I'm really pleased tonight to introduce a new partnership that will continue to help us meet the needs of our students. In our five-year strategic plan, one of the strategies we specifically mentioned to assist us in reaching our goals is to work with institutions of higher learning to engage in research for improvement on student outcomes. So I am very pleased tonight to introduce Dr. Kevin Crambule to the board. Dr. Crambule is the program director for the Assessment, Learning, and Student Success doctoral program at MTSU. And he is going to briefly tell us about the new facet of our overall partnership with the university and introduce a few members of his staff. Thank you, Dr. Duke and uh, honorable chair and board members, esteemed board members. It's my privilege to stand before you tonight. So thank you. Uh, as introduced, I'm Kevin Crambill, the program director for the Assessment, Learning, and Student Success EDD program. And I've also got a few members who are with me tonight who I'd love to at least introduce briefly. Uh, Dr. John Lando Carter and Dr. Angie Hooser are two members of our team. Um, two others who could not join us tonight, uh, Dr. Heather Dillard and also Dr. Kim Evert are, have been integral in this partnership, but also on the work that we do. So uh, one, just a thank you and an introduction from ourselves, but we are very excited about the continuing to support MCS in a more formal and systematic way, uh, really to really support the great work that MCS is doing. We've been extremely excited about that and are excited to be a part of that moving forward. The benefits that we kind of see with this there are really that we can support one another in a res uh, reciprocal nature where there's a collective and sustained inquiry into what's going on. We, we call them problems of practice. You might think of them as topics of relevance, those things that are just on the cusp we're interested in in what's happening in, our, in your system. You guys are obviously working day to day with so much going on. We're excited about bringing our resources and hands to help you. And in doing so, that's going to help our students and our learning because 
we don't want to be isolated in an ivory tower from the world of reality. We're preparing people to engage in that. So we are extremely excited about both the, collect the collective and sustained inquiry that we can do together moving forward. And so thinking about some of the uh, things that have been mentioned tonight, I can already see all sorts of opportunities that we can capitalize on where you're able we'll to benefit from the uh, resources, the expertise that we have. And of course, then our students are going to get the same thing because they're going to be consistently getting not what I knew 20 years ago, but what's real today. So. Uh, that's a, a quick high level view of it there, but we are so excited to be here at SPAN for you tonight and looking forward to continuing this thing moving forward. And if I can add, so what this actually will look like on an ongoing basis is that our team will actually sit down with the um, ALSS doctoral team to talk, like he said, about the problems of practice. What are things we're looking at? Is it whether it's one of our social emotional programs, something in our reading program, um, uh, our STEM designations and the impact that's having, and then us talking about this is what we really are intrigued and in knowing and this is what is working or challenges we're coming up with, and then leveraging their research ability, their doctoral students, to do that research for us, put that information together, and come back and say, here's what we're seeing and here's some things for you to consider. So it's not just, um, as he said, MTSU at the university talking about what used to be, it's not just us saying we think this is going to work, it's us coming together and saying this is what we're trying to figure out, and they're saying this is what the research says, now let's create an actionable plan moving forward to address these needs. We're really excited about it. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kay and the team for uh, your uh, assistance, and it's going to be a great, a great partnership. Thank you, sir, very much. Any questions by board members? All right, thank you, sir. We do appreciate very much. Yes. Do we need a motion to approve this or not? We do not. Okay, I didn't think so. But we do need a motion to approve the consent items. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Any question or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. All right, action items. Let's see here. First policy, vacation and holidays. Yes, sir. Policy 5.310 governs employee vacations and holidays. This amendment only changes the wording holiday pay to vacation pay to increase the consistency between the policies and so that vacation and holiday are not used interchangeably. Again, the only change is a verbiage change and we recommend adoption of this amendment on the first reading. All right, do we have a motion to approve the policy? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Barton. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Goff. Questions? I do. Part-time employees, do they earn sick leave? I'm going to refer, uh, they do not. Mr. Ringstaff, do you want to add anything to that? No. Part-time employees really do not have any benefits. Insurance, medical insurance, uh, okay. sick leave. So First what time. constitutes a part-time compared to a full-time a classified employee. A full-time employee works 30 or more hours a week. Does it work 30 more hours a week? All right. All right. Any other questions? All in favor of adopting the policy, say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. 6.400 student wellness. Policy 6.400 is the coordinated school health policy for Murfreesboro City Schools. These amendments remove repetitive language, clarifies how phys physical activity is to be governed during the school day, and updates the policy to align current practices. We recommend that this amendment be adopted as presented. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Barton. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Goff. Any question or comment? I see none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Board meeting calendar. We are presenting the 2022-2023 Murfreesboro City Schools regular board meeting schedule for board approval. Regular meetings are scheduled for the second and fourth Tuesday of each month unless otherwise noted. The attached calendar also includes two predetermined work sessions for consideration. The schedule does not include special called meetings, budget work sessions, or other work sessions that may be needed for the operation of the school system. Okay. Mr. So, Chairman. Yes, sir. I move for the adoption. Thank you, sir. Have a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Any question or comment on the calendar? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. 
All right, nutrition budget. On April 26, earlier this year, the school board did approve the 2022-2023 budget for school nutrition. In reviewing the budget documents, a clerical error was located in the formula calculating the grand total expenditures. I do want to clarify that the individual line items that were presented for all lines were reported correctly and they have not changed. However, the clerical error in the spreadsheet did miscalculate the grand total expenditure for 2022-23. The attached budget corrects that error and changes the approved grand total expenditure from $9,495,834 to $9,246,621. The change also adjusts the net decrease to fund balance from the original approved $1,994,021 to $1,789,471. We have a motion to approve the revised school nutrition budget. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Goff. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Any question or comment? I see none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And I see none. Thank you. Budget amendment transfers. Yes, sir. The first one is the approval of a McKinney Vento and Literacy Stipend Grant, and this budget amendment is for our federal programs fund. This amendment budgets a new Title IX McKinney Vento grant and literacy training stipend federal grant in the school projects, school federal projects fund. The new FY23 Title IX McKinney Vento Federal Grant covers the needs of our homeless student. students. This grant of $200,000 will pay for the salary and related benefits of two full-time staff members, as well as materials and supplies, professional development, and indirect cost. The first staff member we are looking to use this grant for is a student in transition specialist who will provide annual training to all school personnel and participate in community initiatives to build and foster relationships with agencies that serve our homeless families. The second staff member is a bilingual family engagement liaison who will be assisting and assessing our multi-language homeless, homeless students for the purpose of identification, enrollment, suggesting plans of services to support the educational objectives, and coordinating community resources to meet the needs of our homeless multi-language students. The liaison will serve as a primary contact between the multi-language community and our community partners. The second part of this agreement is for a new FY22 literacy training grant stipend of $103,000. This will fund a stipend to all of our eligible pre-K through fifth grade teachers to be trained on the continued implementation of our Sounds First curriculum this summer. Teachers participating in the four-day training will receive a $1,000 pre-tax stipend for 32 hours of training and we are recommending approval of both of the combined amendment. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Barton. We have a second. Second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Who does, will this come under what supervisor? For the homeless, the students uh -huh. in transition, that will fall under Mr. Marlin's department and our student support division. All right. I will Let's say currently uh, we are sitting, just so the board is aware, at 241 homeless students in our district right now as a for the whole year we've served 286 as the but 241 are with us currently um, and right at 54 of those um, do not have English as their first language which is why this will help us with those families by hiring the liaison to help with those large number of bilingual um, homeless students as well Mr. Ballard well he stepped out in front of me answered my question I was <laughs> yeah he did mine too we uh we have now I will ask is that bigger or smaller number before COVID I mean where are we now in relationship for the last couple of years did it grow you know I'll have to look as far as the last couple of years I can tell you throughout the school year we have seen a steady increase so actually during COVID our McKinney Vento numbers were pretty low uh, they were not high there was of course an eviction moratorium going on mm -hmm. so that kept last year during the height of the pandemic we did not see as many homeless students identified but we have seen that number rapidly increase this year mr marlin is there anything you'd like to add to that uh, the number obviously is higher um, and, and it's hard to gauge with covid having impacted all that but uh this is, would be a higher number than i think 
And does it, how long does a homeless student stay in that situation with us? Uh, do we have, is this something that transitions in and out with, within weeks or is it months or throughout the whole school year? It's really situational dependent. When we identify a student as qualifying as a student in transition under the McKinney-Vento Act, they stay qualified as that for the entire school year. And then every, at the beginning of the next school year, we would relook at that situation to say, do they still meet those federal requirements? I do want to remind our board that when we talk about our homeless students, it is, it, you may have think about, okay, these are students living in cars, which in some cases it may be, but it's also students living in motels who may be going from motel to motel, families who are doubled up with right. other families. Right. Um, so there are multiple pieces of that that would qualify a student for fitting in this category as a student in transition. Mm -hmm. Mr. I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, you just catching up on one of our many, many social things we take care of. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ms. Moore? Uh, just a couple questions. So, th so this, you said we'd serve 286 over the year, but the number's lower now. Does that mean those students moved out of the district? That could be the case. So they would have qualified, so they were not in our district anymore. Okay. So it's not uncommon for a student to move to a different county, maybe mm -hmm. they move to Metro or somewhere like that. We work with those families and determine, is it still best for that child to stay in Rutherford, uh, Rutherford County, specifically Murfreesboro City, or is it best for them to transition to a school closer to where they're living? So that's why that number fluctuates sometimes. And then the question I was going to ask is, just to clarify, so both of these, both of these grants, are these new? This is funds we have not had before. These are both brand new grants. So that is correct. The McKinney-Vento grant is a brand new grant that we've applied for. It is a multiple year grant that we would reapply for every year, but we would, once you get it the first time, you know, You'll have to redo the application every year, mm -hmm. but it is a multi-year grant. The literacy training grant we actually received last year as well when we paid the teachers last year to ascend that training. That was the first year that, the first summer that we did the training. It's through the State Department and they provide those funds for us to pay the teachers to attend it. Of course, that's also part of our strategic plan to have all kindergarten through second grade teachers have that training on that strong literacy um, mm -hmm. knowledge of how to and how to teach students to read appropriately. Um, and we're really excited. We are looking at, by the end of this summer, we will have 291 of our teachers trained in this program. So we're super excited. We get great feedback um, from the training. Ms. Goff? So it, will this be one or like two positions that'll be posted? It'll be, two, it'll be two positions once we get final approval <coughs> from the state. So we'll have one position, which will be the Families in Transition Specialist, who again will work with the community, really monitor the attendance of these students, help make sure they have the resources they need, um, work with the schools, provide training, and then we will also post a new uh, bilingual in to, uh, engagement liaison to help with families and communications with what families may need. Other questions or comments? I see none. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And I see none. Thank you. School Nutrition Fund Budget Amendment. This amendment represents another new set of funds to budget a one-time pandemic electronic benefits transfer, or what we refer to as PEBT, administrative cost grant in the FY22 School Nutrition Fund. This grant reimburses the School Nutrition Fund for administrative costs that were incurred last school year for the support and delivery of the PEBT cards to school or by mail. The pandemic EBT program gave money to eligible families with a student who missed a meal due to school closures and or remote learning. The money is issued on a card that the families can use at the grocery store to buy food. So as a reminder, when we were closed during COVID, the federal government delivered these funds to families so they could have reimbursements if they traditionally got their meals at school. But they did depend on the schools to deliver these cards. And so we had a lot of work on our end to organize those cards, the tracking that was involved with it. In fact, uh, Mr. Marlin and his team are still working on some of that uh, to make sure that the correct families get the money from uh, the federal government. And so this grant really is a reimbursement back to fund for those administrative costs for us working that program. Okay. 
We have a motion to approve the School Nutrition Fund Budget Amendment. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Moore. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Barton. Any question or comment, Mr. Settle? So the cards were delivered to the district and the district? Originally, mm -hmm. the first time, now those are being delivered directly to the family. So the first round, they were delivered to the district. We as the sent those to the schools to send to families. Now they're going directly to the families. But we still have to go in and monitor and <coughs> report attendance if they were out due to COVID, how many days. Um, to determine, so the, they can determine how much money to load on. So we're still doing the administrative piece of it? Yes. Not that necessarily. Well, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. All right, approval for the general purpose budget transfer. Yes, sir. This amendment, as we continue our year in cleanup of budget amendments, I appreciate it. Uh, this budget transfer it directly impacts our GP budget and has three items that we're looking at. First, in our student support services department, they are requesting additional funds and equipment to purchase a new computer with monitors from savings in the other material and supply line item. Our transportation supervisor has requested an increase in the gasoline and ve vehicle repair category from savings and other non-labor line items. This increase is due to the high cost of fuel and additional repairs that are needed for the buses. And finally, we are adding some additional furniture money to purchase classroom desks and chairs due to the changing of pre-K classrooms to traditional classrooms at Scales Elementary for next year. There are no increases to revenues or expenditures. This is just kind of shifting some of that money around and there is no change to unassigned fund balance. Do we have a motion to approve the budget transfer? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Goff. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Any question or comment? I see none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Operating budget transfers. Yes, sir. This final budget amendment uh, is being done to correct the coding of the federal bookkeeper position. To meet audit requirements, the reimbursement of 40% of salaries and benefits must be tracked in the operating transfers account in both the federal and GP funds. The remaining 60% of the salaries are charged directly to the ESSER III federal grant. The position was approved in the FY22 budget process, and this only ch the only change is to reflect coding of the salary to meet audit requirements. All right, do we have a motion to approve the budget operating transfer? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Settle. We have a second. Second. Thank Ms. you, Ms. Goff. Any question or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And I see none. Thank you. All right, reports and information. Director's evaluation update. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. I just wanted to give the board a brief update regarding the director's evaluation. The evaluation that the board approved back in October has been distributed to the board, the principals, and the senior leadership team at central office. I have been receiving the responses and the preliminary results will be sent to the board and Dr. Duke on May 31st, 2022, and they'll be presented at the June 14th, 2022 board meeting. As you're aware, TN Ready results are not yet available, and the board will have an opportunity to complete that section of the evaluation once we get those results in from the state. Um, so that's where we are with the evaluation process, and I'm happy to answer any questions you all might have about it. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Uh, Chairman, I would like to make a motion that we um, enter into negotiations on behalf of the board regarding the extension of Director Duke's contract if the results of the director's evaluation reflect a rating of ad expectations or better. Second. We have a motion and a second. Authorize me and whatever to enter. Ooh, that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're waiting all year. <laughs> All right, you've heard the motion. Do we have we have a second now? Is there any question or discussion? Gosh, I don't think there's any question at all. Mm -hmm. okay. I have to ask for it. Well, Mr. Chairman, I have to say I, I don't want to give too much of a preview of my director's evaluation, uh, but talk about the best of MCS. 
uh, Dr. Duke's leadership, example, and passion for students and for educators for this system has brought out the best in all of us. I cannot be more proud with the vote I cast for the gentleman sitting across from me. Therefore, I would ask for a unanimous vote to empower you to engage in contract negotiations so that he's not stolen from a federal entity or a state entity. <laughs> Don't put it out there. I was going to say, can we make him stay for right. a certain amount of time? Mark my words, Mr. Chairman, if he does stay with us, we'll be naming buildings and libraries and classrooms after this gentleman. His impact will have been felt for decades to come. I could not agree anymore. Therefore, the motion has been made and seconded and commented. All in favor, say aye loudly. Aye. aye. Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Duke, for what you have done and you continue to do for us and this school system. We are proud to have you as part of the team. Again. It's a great team to be a part of. All right, reports and information. <coughs> Anything? Well, the enrollment report. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, we got quite a few things. We do. We have the, the enrollment, enrollment report. I'd be glad to share with you at this time. Um, if you'll look at your uh, the documents that's been shared with you, our enrollment for period eight was 9,463, which is a small decline from the previous period. Uh, at the end of period seven, we had 9,478, so a decrease of about 15 students. And if you look on the second page, you can see we've added a new fe feature there. We'll also add it to the first page next year. But if you look at the second page on PTR, if you look at the far right hand column you can see where those numbers either either increased or declined and you so you can see that it's a mixed bag there from school to school uh, but with a net loss there of 12 students and uh, the other three can be accounted for in the non-BEP and the special education area on, on the first page our uh, pupil teacher ratio for this period shows that grades uh, kindergarten through third grade at 18.80 and that's at the bottom of the page there in green uh, in in blue the fourth grade through sixth grade that pupil teacher ratio is 20.73 with an overall uh, district average of 19.46 so we stay within all the ranges where, where we'd like to stay on the third page you'll find our chronic absentee uh, numbers for this period uh, we're standing at 1,347 students who are at the verge of becoming chronically absent will know whether or not we, they all reach there by the end of the of period nine. I looked at that number today. It looks like that number will be slightly under 1,200, uh, but we have a couple of days left and we'll, that number can always change. Um, that's, uh, you can see that the, that the um, progression of the numbers across the different periods have declined over time with some upticks every, every once in a while. But um, that's a high number, and that's a number that we want to work on next year for sure. And then the truancy report, the very last page, you know, students who've missed 10 or more unexcused absences. At this point, that number has reached 571 students. Again, that's high, and it's a problem that we're working on, and Ms. Taylor and I are working on new ways to address that for next year. We've already started on some, getting some letters ready to work with parents at the beginning of next year. So when we start off, everybody knows where we stand, and, and, and hopefully we won't have any COVID to uh, affect those numbers and and we can work from the standpoint of, uh, of a, a clear slate but a clean slate for everyone but to help parents know the importance of attendance and that, what a factor that is in our academic progress thank you sir mr settle yes sir mr marlin um our ptr where does it fall as far as the state is concerned what is the state uh people teacher ratio varies across the state um, it, it is a number that for us is a recruiting mm -hmm. um, element. It's something that, our, that teachers, when they come to work, they, I think that's a draw for us. Uh, so I would say uh, we, we match a lot of districts, but there are a lot of districts who have much higher pupil-teacher ratio. And so I, I just wanted you to talk a little bit, not a lot, but about, uh, I guess, the importance of PTR as far as student learning as well not not even just the part about the teachers but student learning how does it affect or does it well w without going into research and i don't have that 
in my in my head. Uh, I'm a reporter and not a pro, not a programmer as far as, um, as 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 putting these numbers together. I'm I'm just reporting these numbers. But um, I, I you know as a former teacher, I think I can say from my personal experience uh, that the the lower the pupil teacher ratio, the the better. You know, I was able to provide for my students, and when those numbers get too high, and especially when we have students who are struggling or have uh, social emotional behavioral needs, that uh, it really does help the teacher out to keep those numbers a at a lower ratio. Now, that's from personal experience and not research. I think research is varied on that, and I think you'll find some researchers that have said it's highly impactful, and other researchers that will tell you the opposite. Uh, but I think from personal experience, um, that's the only place that I can come from. Well, I saw a lot of head shaking difference. when you were saying that. I saw a lot of nodding, especially <laughs> from uh, Roseanne, in that uh, the lower the PTR sometimes, well, the better you can, well, I'll speak from my experience. I had four kids. I probably could have done better if I just. Or nine might be right. <laughs> With me, uh, the individualized attention, I think, um, certainly when I think about Murfreesboro City Schools, that is that comes to the top of mind. And I kind of push that. And I, I ask the question for a reason, considering some of the things or the options that have been presented to some of our parents. Uh, recently via media, Facebook, and all these other places uh, that are looking to come in and offer some options. But when we talk about the, the pupil-teacher ratio, that's just one, one of the feathers in our cap uh, for Murfreesboro City Schools that we can definitely say um, that we, we're very proud of. And I, I think it does help with teacher retention because you're able to see and to do better, especially in these very, very formative years of these young minds that we're, we're molding to be great citizens in, the, in our county. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you, sir. Good report. Revenue and expenditure for April. Good evening, board. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you again. So in front of you tonight, you have um, three sheets. The first one includes the total revenue collected for the year and our total expenditures for the year. And if you look at the difference between the two, we're on the plus side of $11.7 million. Kind of break that down just a little bit. In the month of April, we collected total dollars about $8.1 million, and we expended about $7.1 million. So most of the, the majority of our revenue continues to come through our BEP, which is about $4.8 million a month, our property taxes and sales taxes. And for the month of April, we collected about $1.2 million each from property tax and from sales tax. So, And in addition to the city allocation we receive every month, those are our big four sources of, of revenue. So this time of year, you have, um, thank you for approving the, all of those budget amendments. We are getting into the portion, the time of the year that we're looking at our labor and benefits cleanup as well. So the month of April gives us a good projection into the end of the year where we think we'll be with um, our individual line items, and we're, we're drilling down into the details from, from now until the end of June. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have on these reports. Any questions? Thank you, ma'am. A great report. No questions. That means everything is well. <laughs> you keep bringing a $11 million profit, we'll, we'll I'd be happy to start. <laughs> we won't have many questions. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> personnel report. You have the personnel front report in front of you tonight, and Mr. Ringstaff is available to answer any questions you may have on that. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Ringstaff. All right, director's update. Yes, just three items of note for the board tonight. Um, of course, we all know Friday is the last day of school for the year, and if you did not know that, go into a school, you will feel it. In the <laughs> so uh, it's palpable, as the students are very excited. Um, our summer school is going to begin June 6th, 
So as we are right now looking at 800 students who will be attending summer school this year at Case and Lane, Hobgoods, John Pittard, and Northfield. Uh, summer feeding will also begin on June 6th and run through July 29th. We'll be providing meals to all children without charge at 13 sites across the city, and families who are interested can find that information on our website. I did want to say uh, we approved a budget amendment earlier around our gasoline and increasing that line item. I just wanted to bring you some numbers because I like numbers. In August, we were paying $2.25 a gallon for diesel and $1.91 in gas. In April, that charge was $4.14 a gallon for diesel and $3.43 for gas. So we're seeing about an 80, we have seen since August an 84% increase in our diesel cost and a 79% increase in our gas cost. So that is what we are looking at very closely. Um, and I wanted the board to know that. And Mr. Um, Rome and the Transportation Department do a great job with that. But that is something that's very real for us right now as we continue to look at, as um, Ms. Williams said, looking at our budget through the end of the year to make sure everything is in line. Uh, and finally, on a good note as well, uh, we've been talking a lot about our ESP applications. We have our summer program that starts in ESP, a lot of registrations there. And I'm excited to say Ms. Powers emailed me today and told me since in the last month we have received 100 ESP applications. So we are very excited about that. Um, and our hope is some of those that are hiring for the summer we will keep on next year as well for the fall. So uh, those are all my updates for tonight. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. Very good. Mr. Ballard. Back to the fuel cost just for a moment. Have we had any fuel outages or delivery issues? I'm sorry, could you say that one more time? Okay, for diesel fuel, mm -hmm. it seems to be rare at the stations. Is, are we having trouble getting diesel fuel? Mr. Ringstaff, have you heard that? Yeah, we haven't. That has not been something Mr. <coughs> Rome has reported, yeah. just the overall cost. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, any other comments or questions by the board? I see no one with a hand up. If not, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move, Mr. Chairman. Thank second. you, Mr. Richardson. Very emphatic. You have a second. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. All in favor, good night. Good night. Thank you. Lisa? I missed eight of Is that good?